Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Reynolds with Board Better Off Reading Every Day. Today we have three books. The first one is Dream Big Little Pig by Christy Yamaguchi and it's illustrated by Tim Bowers. Okay, let us begin. Poppy was a pig, a pot-bellied, waddling, toddling pig. She was a pig with big dreams, and she was a pig who dreamed big. She wanted to be a star. Poppy had always dreamed of being a posh prima ballerina. She tried out for Swan Lake, a famous ballet, but Poppy was not graceful. In fact, she was quite clumsy. Follow your dreams, said Poppy's mother, who loved her no matter what. You go, girl, said Poppy's grandparents, who were her biggest friends. Dream big, pig said Poppy's best friend, Emma, who was always there for her. Dancing is just not for you, said the people in charge of the ballet. Try something else. So Poppy tried out for Singing Stars, a popular chorus competition. She had always dreamed of being a soulful singer but Poppy sang off key. And to be honest, she couldn't really carry a tune. You go girl, Poppy's grandparents said. Dream big, Emma said. Follow your dreams, said Poppy's mother. Singing just was, singing just is not for you said the people in the charge of the competition, try something else. So Poppy tried out for supermodel search. She had always dreamed of being a big time, splashy supermodel, but Poppy was not very glitzy or glittery, and she even tripped on her own fancy gown. Follow your dreams, said Poppy's mother. You go, girl, said Poppy's grandparents. Dream big, pig, said Emma. Modeling is just not for you, said the people in charge of the search. Try something else. But Poppy didn't know what else to try. And as she wandered through New to, to New Pork City, she began to wonder if her dreams would really come true. Poppy was about to give up when she heard her mother say, just follow your heart. Remember, we love you no matter what. And her grandparents share, we're your biggest fans. And her best friend, Emma Squeal, we he we, we're here for you. Poppy smiled. She knew just what to do. When Poppy thought about all the things she truly loved, her friends and family were at the top of the list. So the next day, Poppy invited Emma for a pig day out in the park. While giggling and strolling along, they spotted an ice rink. Poppy and Emma watched the skaters 
skimming and spinning, swooping and swizzling on the ice. Poppy realized it was the most beautiful sight she had ever seen. Her heart danced with joy. Emma saw a twinkle in Poppy's eye and high-fived her friend. Dream big, pig, she cheered. So Poppy waddled and toddled right up to the teacher and said, I'd like to be a spectacular ice skating star. A pig on ice, the teacher pondered. Honey, I don't know if that's possible. Anything's possible, responded Poppy. I believe in dreaming big. The teacher shrugged. As you wish, she said. We'll see if the pigs got pizzazz. Poppy laced up her skates. She slipped on the ice and slid over the ice. She fell, but this time, Poppy got up, over and over. She shuffled and stumbled and fumbled and fell. But by the time the rink closed for the night, Poppy was skating more than she was falling and it felt like magic. Poppy returned to the rink the very next day. Her cheeks were pink with winter wind and excitement. She was so happy gliding and sliding and tumbling and bumbling on the ice, she didn't even notice that she wasn't perfect. And nobody else did either. Now, a most persistent pig, Poppy learned to twirl and swirl and to do dips and lunges and splits. Poppy learned to do jumps and spirals and lifts. Before she knew it, more and more, skaters stopped to watch Poppy practice. She was quite a sight. She even had her picture on the front page of the newspaper. Poppy felt like a star. Some of her fans made t-shirts that read, follow your dreams. Others wore hats that said, dream big pig, and tote bags declared, you go girl. Poppy's dream had come true. went by but Poppy didn't stop dreaming one day she decided to be a pilot she wanted to parachute and to be the first skydiving pig when pigs fly said the other pilots but they did not know Poppy she was a pig who dreamed big And boys and girls of Dream Big Little Pig. One down, two to go. It's a big world, little pig. Poppy was a pig who dreamed big. She dreamed of being an ice skating star and then she made it happen. She was star of the rink. One day, Poppy received a beautiful invitation in the mail. Reach for the stars, little pig, it read. Fly to Paris, France, and complete compete in the world games. Paris was far away from Poppy's home in New York City. Poppy was excited to see new places, but she was scared about being so far from home.
Dream big, Pig, exclaimed Poppy's best friend, Emma. You go, girl, said Poppy's grandparents. Follow your dreams, said Poppy's mother and father. And remember, we'll be with you every step of the way. Here's a little something for good luck, said Emma. She handed Poppy a good luck charm. It's a big world, little pig, but remember that everyone smiles in the same language. Poppy smiled and then it was time to go. When Poppy arrived at the World Athlete Village, she saw so many different athletes from all over the world. Would they speak the same language? Would she make any new friends? The village was so big. How would she find her way around? Poppy felt very nervous. Poppy had to find the check-in the check-in booth, but she didn't know where to go. She was so nervous, she accidentally bumped into a snowboarder from China named Lee. Do you know where the check-in is? Poppy asked. Lee said, I have a map. Let's find it together. They talked and talked. As they walked around in the athlete village, they even taught each other a few words in their own languages. Hello and Niho, they said to each other. As they waited in line at the check-in booth, Poppy showed Lee her good luck charm. Cool, said Lee, I have a lucky charm too. And he showed Poppy his jade goldfish. Poppy smiled at her new friend and her new friend smiled back. Emma was right, right. They both smiled in the same language. Poppy started to feel a little better about her adventure in Paris. Poppy and Lee wished each other good luck in the competition and waved goodbye. Poppy was soon very hungry and decided to eat in the athlete's dining hall. She looked around the crowded room for a friendly face. A skater from Italy named Gianna waved and offered Poppy a spot at her table. Do you like Italian food? We can share, Gianna said. It's my favorite, said Poppy, from pasta to gelato and of course pizza. Poppy and Gianna talked and talked about food and music and discovered how much they both love Puccini, an Italian composer. Poppy smiled at her new friend and her new friend smiled back. Buona fortuna, they said, wishing each other good luck. time for Poppy to go to practice. She was dressed in her competition costume and was a little worried it might be too different. Another ice skater was standing near Poppy. She was from Japan and her name was Kiyomi. Kiyomi was dressed in her, comp in her competition costume too. It was like nothing Poppy had ever seen. Poppy admired Kiyomi's bold and brightly colored dress. Kiyomi looked at Poppy's spectacular sparkling dress. I like your costume, they said at the same time. Poppy and Kiyomi discovered they both loved fashion and designed their own costume. A dream of being a fabulous fashion designer, said Kiyomi. Poppy knew all about dreams too. Poppy smiled at her new friend and her new friend smiled back. Smiled, smiled back. Gambitali, kudasia, they said, wishing each other good luck. It 
was time for competition to start, Poppy waited backstage and thought about how wonderful it was to have met so many new friends. Just then she saw a speed skater from Australia named Zoe. She looked very scared and nervous. Poppy knew just how she felt. When I'm nervous, Poppy told Zoe, I think about what my grandparents and my best friend always tell me. Cheer big, dream big, you go girl. Thanks, said Do Zoe. My friends and family always tell me you can do it. Poppy and Zoe talked and talked about how much their family and friends support, support them and love them no matter what. Poppy smiled at her new friend and her new friend smiled back. Zoe wasn't nervous anymore because she had made a new friend in Poppy. They wished each other good luck and said, hooroo, which means goodbye. Poppy took the ice. She felt the joy of new friendships and discoveries. She skated from her heart. She knew she would always remember this special trip. When Poppy skated off the ice, her mother and father gave her a huge hug. They were so proud of her. I'm so happy you traveled so far, her father said. I'm so happy you followed your dreams, her mother said. In celebration, Poppy and her family spent the rest of the week in Paris the city of lights. They saw the Eiffel Tower and visited art museums. They even ate some French food. Poppy bought four postcards. She addressed them to Lee, the snowboarder, Gianna, the skater, Kiyomi, the ice skater, and Zoe, the speed skater. I'm so glad we became friends, she wrote. Even though we are from different parts of the big world, we all smile in the same language. And then she signed each postcard, Love Poppy. The end. The end, boys and girls, of It's a Big World, Little Pig. Two down, one to go. This book is Kara's Kindness. And this book is illustrated by John Lee. cat was practicing at the ice house skating rink. She was listening to different pieces of music for a, her upcoming performance, but nothing sounded right. Then she noticed one little guy off to the side watching with a sad face. She skated over to him. Hi, I'm Kara. As in caring about why you, <clears throat> you look so down. Hi, I'm Darby the dog, he responded. And well, I don't know how to skate and I'm a little afraid to try. Aha, exclaimed Kara, I can give you a helping hand with that. Let's go. Kara guided Darby onto the os. Whoa, I'm for sure going to fall down, said a worried Darby. Well, of course, that's part of skating, said Kara. So the first thing you need to learn is how to get back up. Darby fell down a few times, but Kara helped him up. And pretty soon he was skating. You 
rock, Kara, said Darby. Now I can go join my friends. Thanks so much. No worries. Just pass on the kindness, replied Kara with a smile. Darby was hungry from skating and playing tag. As he sat down to have a PB&J and a juice box, he heard a rumbling sound that grew so loud he jumped. Darby looked around. Ah, oh, Pax the polar bear looked over at him. I forgot my lunchbox, he grumbled. Well, guess what, said Darby. I have enough for two. They shared some nibbles and sips and treats. Mmm, that was yummy for my tummy, said a happy Pax. You're the best, Darby. Thanks so much. No worries. Just pass on the kindness, replied Darby with a smile. As they were heading home from the rink, Pax asked Kara, Have you found the right music yet? No, sighed Kara. I know the right piece is out there. I just haven't heard it yet. Suddenly, they saw Marky the monkey. What are you doing? asked Kara, practicing falling out of tree. No, my ball bounced into the lake, and there's no way I'm going into the freezing water, responded Marky. Stand back. If you don't want to get wet, roared Pax as he flew through the air and landed with a giant splash. He gracefully glided through the water, fetched Marky's ball, and tossed it back to him. Sweet, exclaimed Marky. Thank you so much, Pax. No worries, just pass on the kindness, replied Pax with a smile. The next day, as they were playing kickball, Kara noticed a new girl in school watching them. She was peeping from behind a tree. Hey, Marky, let's go over and say hi, said Kara. They walked up to her. Hello, I'm Kara, and this is my friend Marky. I'm Samantha the skunk, she said shyly. How do you like the school so far, asked Marky. It's fine, but I do miss playing kickball, she said. Well. Come pitch for us, Marky said. Samantha rolled the ball to Marky, who kicked it high up in the air towards Kara. She caught it and tossed the ball back to Samantha. That was great. Thanks for letting me join the team, Samantha exclaimed. No worries, just pass on the kindness replied Marky with a smile. A week later, Kara, Samantha, and Pax were cheering on Darby at their school's championship hockey game. This is so exciting, chimed Kara. We haven't won the state championship in 16 years. Milo, the mole, sat down next to Kara. Hey, Kara, any luck with your music, he asked. Kara sighed, still listening, but haven't heard the right song yet. Kara introduced Sam Samantha to Milo. How do you do, said Milo. I'm glad you've met our caring friend, Kara. I'm blind, so she usually tells me who scores, so I know what all the cheering is about. I love hockey, and I can give you a play-by-play -play of the game, Samantha said excitedly. He takes the puck away, passes it up to the forward, who goes around the net. He shoots, he scores! Milo jumps up and cheers. He felt like he was really part of the game today. Thank you, Samantha, Milo said as he hugged her. No worries, just pass on the kindness, replied Samantha with a smile.
The next week at school, the students were still celebrating, but Kara was worried about today was her showcase performance and her friends had come to support her. Oh, I'm feeling butterflies in my stomach, said Kara. The music is still not right for me. I need help. Maybe my good luck present will help you with your butterflies, replied Milo. I'd like to play a special song I wrote for your performance. Wow, gasped Carla. Thank you. It means so much to have the support of friends like you. As Milo played the piano, the joyful melody inspired Kara. She wowed the audience with her jumps and spins and footworks. And at the end, everyone gave her a standing ovation. Kara was so happy. She knew the caring and passing on a small kindness one good deed at a time had come full circle right back to her. Caring makes a big difference. Kara was so happy. She knew that caring and passing on a small kindness was good deed at a time had come full circle right back to her. Caring makes a big difference. Boys and girls, I read that last part of this book twice because it takes my breath away. And on the back of the book it says, when you pass on some kindness, it might make its way back to you. The end. Of Kara's Kindness by Christy Yamaguchi. Now boys and girls, I chose these books all three of these books because when I was much younger than I am now, I used to watch Christy Yamaguchi skate and it was like a work of art to me as a young girl. And I remember when she won the championship in the Olympics. I was still very young back then and it was absolutely stunning and it was absolutely beautiful. And she has won other awards other than just that. She is one of the greatest skaters that I've ever seen skate. So when I was doing my search for what books I wanted to be my after 150th books, I decided to go with these three books because basically to me, 151, 152, and 153. It is Miss Reynolds with Board, Better Off Reading Every Day. And I hoped you liked all of these stories from Christy Yamaguchi. I know I absolutely enjoyed them. And best of all, I absolutely enjoyed putting on my skates and putting on my skating outfit and sitting here and reading with you. It has been my pleasure. I hope that you are having the kind of day where you are able to bring kindness to someone and they're able to pass that kindness on because you know it's gonna come right back to you eventually. Boys and girls, you make me proud and thank you so much for letting me share this kindness with you.